In this tutorial, we'll try to understand some of the terminologies and some of the concepts uh, associated with the web service technology. Let's start with uh, an example of, uh, let's start with the scenario. Let's say I'm writing a Java implementation class, right? I have a, a MPL and uh, I wanna share this implementation with uh, other developers of the project. So how would I share it? So let's say you have a consumer class and I want to share this IMPL with this consumer class. How would I do it? The best way to share such implementation classes, uh, the contract of the implementation class, would be as an interface. Right? I'll create an interface for this IMPL, and any consumer would consume this IMPL through this interface. Right? And the interface, uh, they would actually call an implementation through. The interface so they get the contract they get to know what are the methods what are the you know the arguments what are the return types through this interface and then they actually call the methods of the IMPL right so an interface is a standard way in which you can share any contract like this to a consumer right so now think about how this would work in the case of a web service now let's say I have a, a web service implementation and I want to share the details of this web service to the consumer. Right, so I have a consumer here and I want to share the details of this web service to that consumer. Now would an interface work? Let's say I create the interface and share it with the consumer. Would it work? Well, it probably might not work because as we discussed in the previous tutorial, you don't know what technology this consumer is, right? It could be a C++ application or it could be a .NET application, right? You never really know. And let's say you have a Java web service, right? A web service is written in Java. You might want to give some kind of an interface that a consumer, irrespective of the technology, can actually consume, right? So let's say this consumer is a C++ uh, application. Now, if I give the C++ developer a Java interface, they'll probably have some interesting things to say to me. So that would probably not work, right? So this contract that I'm going to share with a web service consumer has to be technology independent, right? It should be something that any any application, any technology can understand, right? So an interface would probably not work. Now, when the developers of the, you know, when the creators of the web service uh, specification thought about this problem, what they came up with was a format that would be understood by all the technologies and all the consumers. Any guesses what this format is? Well, it's actually XML. Right? So what you do is, when you create a web service and you want to share the contract of the web service, you actually share that contract as an XML document. Right? This XML document is actually what's called as WSDL or it's pronounced as WSDL. It stands for Web Service Description Language or Web Service Definition Language. So what this uh, WSDL document contains is the contract to your web service, right? So that's one thing you would have to do when you create a web service. You share the WSDL document of that web service to the consumers, right? So this is not something you would have to do manually. You can do it manually if you want, but then there are tools which generate the visual for a web service, right? But this is something that you need to share with your consumers. And it's an XML document. So irrespective of whether the application is C++ or .NET, they can all parse this XML and uh, get to know what the web service is. And typically, the content of this visual is kind of similar to what an interface does, right? It has the methods. It's called as operations in the web service world. So it has what are the methods that can be called, right? What are the arguments? What is the return type? Right? This is this is typically what an interface contains as well. So at a very high level, this information is present in the pistol. Now, of course, we will take a you know more detailed look at it later, but these information will be available in the Vistal, and then the consumer application knows what to call, okay? All right, so now, let's say you are, uh, you're writing your own application, 
right? You have a client application, and uh, you are in a mood to call some web services, right? So how do you know what web services to call, right? We know that one way to get uh, information about the web service is the visitor, right? The visitor is the interface to the web service, but how do you get hold of the visitor? Well, there are these uh, these directories of web services, kind of like the yellow pages of web services where you can actually query and get information about the web services. And these directories are called UDDI. UDDI stands for Universal Description, Discovery, and Integration. Some people pronounce it as UD. I don't know. Uh, I knew a guy who used to call JNDI as Jindi, and I thought that was bad enough. But yeah, this is this is UDDI, and this is like the yellow pages of web services. It's a registry where, let's say, your new business creating a web service can actually register your web service over here. And anybody who wants to consume that web service can actually query this directory and uh, they can use the web service, right? They can find the web service first of all, and then they can get the visitor and they can use it. So UDDI is not a very popular concept. At least it didn't get the kind of adoption that was originally intended, but you might get to use it. So it's good to know. Okay, so now we've learned two uh, web service jargons so far. We've learned what a visitor is and we've learned what UDDI is. Okay, let's move on. Now, let's say you've queried UDDI and you've got the visitor and now you are writing your client application that calls the web service, right? So this is your uh, client app again, right? And uh, you're writing a Java application that calls this web service. You have a web service here, and you've got the visual document. And you want to call this web service. So anything you, you write in your client application is playing Java classes, right? So you have Java code inside methods. Now think for a minute about how this exchange happens, right? Now we've got the visual, and uh, you know what information needs to be sent and what is the return type, right? But the question is, how do you actually send this information? Now, let's say the input argument is a string, right? So you have a Java string with you and you need to send it to the web service. How do you send it? Let's say the output, the return type is a list, right? How do you get that information? Because this could be a C++ application and a string in Java is obviously different from a string in C++. Now, how do you exchange this data between the client application and the web service. Well, again, when you're exchanging any information, be it the input arguments or the return type, you need to exchange it in a format that all these different technologies can understand. Irrespective of the actual implementation technology, it should be able to understand what you're passing and it should be able to send a return type back in a language that all these different technologies can understand. Any guesses what this format is? Yes, it's XML again. So whenever you're sending any information across the network from a client to the web service and then the return type back to the client, it has to be in an XML format, right? So you cannot really send a string or a list or anything like that. You cannot serialize Java objects and send them across because if this is a C++ application, what will it do with the serialized Java object? It doesn't really have any idea. So it has to be in a language neutral format, which is XML again, right? So there is the specification about how you need to send all these different input types and output arguments. Basically any data type needs to be sent in a specific XML format. It's a protocol really. It's a, it's a way in which both the, uh, the, you know, the sender and the receiver understands. And this protocol, this XML protocol is called SOAP. Right? It's called Simple Object Access Protocol. Makes sense? It's a way in which these different technologies can access objects, can access data, right? And it is supposedly simple, so that's a part of the name. It's called Simple Object Access Protocol, right? It's kind of an understanding so that all these different uh, technologies 
written in different languages can kind of understand what they're all talking about. Okay, so this is the third uh, terminology that you need to understand, right? It's SOAP. Now, you, you know what is the web service, right? You know what needs to be sent and you know how to send it, which is using the SOAP protocol. Now, who does this conversion, right? So you have your uh, string object, you have your own complex object and data types. Now, how do you do the conversion from a Java object to a SOAP message? So the conversion is actually done by an intermediary class over here, right? So this class takes care of converting all your um, objects into a SOAP message, right? The whole method call itself needs to be converted to a SOAP message, right? Because the message itself is interpreted at the other end. So this conversion is actually done by what's called as a SEI, right? It stands for Service Endpoint Interface. So what the Service Endpoint Interface does is it acts as an interface to your web service endpoint. Right, so this is your web service endpoint. This is what actually does provide you the service. So you have an interface at your client application to the service endpoint, which translates the whole web service call to a SOAP message. And then it makes sure that the other thing is able to understand this message, right? It follows the protocol. So this is called as the service endpoint interface. And we don't actually have to write this class and write all the conversions ourselves. We can have this automatically generated for us. But then this is something that you need to understand. And then when you're making a web service call, you don't worry about where the web server is and where you need to call. All you need to do is have this service endpoint interface created, generated, and then you call a method of this service endpoint interface. And the good thing about the service endpoint interface is that you can actually have an interface that's specific to what you're developing, right? Say this is a Java application. You can have a service endpoint interface that is specific to a Java application. So it knows to convert Java objects to a SOAP message, right? Now let's say you're writing a C++ application, calling the same web service, right? It's calling the exact same web service. So you will have a service endpoint interface here for C++, that knows how to convert C++ objects to SOAP message, how to convert a C++ access to web service to a SOAP message, right? So it takes care of handling all this web service and SOAP complexity so that you can actually write C++ code, which calls a method. It's as simple as that. And then this takes care of all the web service complexity and you don't have to deal with it. So we have learned four different terminologies so far. We've learned what a WSDL is. A WSDL stands for Web Service Description Language Document, which describes what a web service is in an XML format that different technologies can understand. And then we've learned what UDDI is. It is a directory where any publisher can publish their web services and a consumer can query this directory and get access to all the different web services. Third, We've learned what SOAP is. It's basically a protocol. It's a language. It's a format, again, an XML format that is used to encode and decode different messages. You're making a call to a web service. It ends up as a SOAP message that gets transmitted over the network so that the, the, you know, the web service itself, irrespective of the technology, can understand it. And then fourth, we've learned what a service endpoint interface is. It's an interface to the service endpoint. It's an interface to the web service that provides a way for your client application irrespective of the technology to call the web service. So depending on the technology, you get a service endpoint interface for that technology. So a Java application has a Java service endpoint interface and a .NET application has a .NET service endpoint interface. And this is something you can actually generate out of the web service itself. Out of the visual, you can actually generate a service endpoint interface and you can your code can actually use it all right so these are some of the important concepts about web services that you need to understand we're going to go into more detail in the next tutorial thanks for watching